Today is day three with my gelding and I've moved him to the smaller pen over here because I'm going to hopefully try to get a rope over his neck, uh, just like a soft kind of long lining rope and get him to start responding to pressure and understanding to stay still instead of doing that wiggling game. But we'll see how far we get. I'd like to be able to have him sniff me once before I start tossing the rope, start with some basic desensitizing of it, and then work my way up to getting it over, getting it through the loop, which I'll show you guys the setup of, and then working towards getting a little bit closer to him. So because it's a new pen, I've got to figure out where his comfort area is. I wouldn't be surprised if it's good boy near the red mare over there. Good boy. And since this pen does have corners, I'm going to be a little bit more careful in how I approach him because I don't ever want him to feel super stuck. However, I do want to get back over to the side that I've been working on. You can drink that, go ahead. Go ahead, I'll wait. Good. So slowly working back up to the stick, kind of touching his neck area. Good boy. Good. She's going to nip you. It was a good thing I put the red mare kind of secluded by herself because she just wants to be everyone's best friend so I could see how she might, she might interact in a good way in the scenario where it helps the other horse gain confidence, but I don't want her to necessarily bite the other horse and push him away. So this is the little game that you guys have seen before in the prior videos that I was talking about that I might want to work on good, getting him to stay more stationary. Girl. <laughs> you can't bend the panel in that way. And I might take that hay bag out of there since it's a little bit of a distraction for him or put it on the other side of her pen for her because I really do want him to be more focused rather than trying to get food. Sorry, Mare Bear. There you go. Let's go back into your corner. Good boy. So today is when we put the pressure on a little more. That's why we're going to be going to the rope because I want him good to start to settle and realize that I can be close without really asking anything of him. Good boy. Good boy. Good. I do like that response right there, being pretty respectful to the stick. 
it's a little bit like what I would do if I were trying to get a horse directed over to obstacles or working on liberty. So it's cool to see the little response there. Good boy. Good. Good. As soon as the feet stay still, I'm going to release this pressure. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. All right, so ideally I want the head up when I'm doing that, but if he's gonna stand still, then I have no problem moving along to the rope because I did get that touch in. So right now I'm not too worried about the way that it falls over him. And a good way to work on this after you've done the um, lunge stick is gonna be going back to that if they're not good with the pressure of the rope. Okay, because that's a lighter line, it's easier to maneuver. But I'll see right away if we can start with this. You don't want a leather popper on the end, okay, because that's going to add extra noise. That's kind of asking him to go forward. Good boy. Good. If they do move from the rope, which I'm sure he will a couple times, you're just going to keep tossing it and stick with them. Okay, just like with the lunge line that we were doing the other day, or the lunge whip, sorry, you're going to be moving it and kind of snaking it over the back and getting them used to that feel. Now, I don't mind teaching him how to give to pressure on the neck first. I don't want to do anything like choking him out or anything of those sorts. I just want to work on getting the rope around the neck, getting him to give to pressure. To if it ever gets dangerous, I'm going to let go of the rope. It's going to come off. It's going through just a little golden brass ring like this. That way, if I can't get it off by hand, I can just take my stick and wiggle it to get it off of him. You're going to put the ring on the end of your line. I do want a line long enough that if needed, I can try to keep up with the horse because I really don't want to let them fully get away from that pressure and get them learning bad habits. But it is good to have a line this long. It has a good weight to it. This is from Double Dan Horsemanship. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Good. Now I was talking about leading him by his neck, hi friend, instead of the head initially. I think I want my horse to be able to lead by every part of their body because it's going to make them softer overall. You'll see at some point with them, I'm going to do leading by the feet. That's really great for introducing them to picking up their feet and just being more movable. Good boy. Good. Good. 
I also like leading a little bit by the neck because the head is a little more precious. They can damage their pull pretty easily if they're pulling back on anything. Their neck has more surface to it. Good boy. Good. So I'll see if I can just get the head to give. Good. Similar to if I had the halter on, anytime I put pressure on it, I want that nose to tip towards me and then I'll release. We start with the really small asks. Good. Good. I don't really need anything from the feet quite yet. I'm not really looking for him to walk forward towards me, just soften with his face. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Good. I like having the ring on it too because the second they do give, the ring instantly releases around them. And you could have it further down on their neck. It doesn't really matter what position it's in. Good boy. This is similar to what I was working through with the red mare yesterday where she, he's not really necessarily wanting to cooperate per se or playing along with the game or anything. He's not being bad by any means, but the mare, when I put the lead on for the first time, she kind of just followed me around and she really didn't get the experience of pressure until she wanted to go leave and get distracted because she got bored with what we were doing. And then that's when we had a little bit more of a problem with him He's not really playing the game as much, but he's wanting to go off and look at the hay, so that's where I can introduce that pressure to him. Good boy. Good boy. Good, and all I really want is that nose, perfect. So I don't mind if he's walking for it or not right now. That nose just needs to tip towards me. Good. Good boy. Good. Now I might start introducing touching on the neck with this. Right, so if I go up to touch him and he pulls his nose away, his nose comes back. I keep the stick at the distance of his bubble where he got a little bit uncomfortable and then I take the stick away, right? I'm not gonna keep pressing it on him if he got uncomfortable with it right here, but I am going to show him the answer. Like, hey, if you keep your feet still, tip your nose towards it, good boy, the stick goes away. Again, there's some discomfort, the nose turning away, nose comes towards, stick goes away. Good. Good boy. Good boy. I'll give a bigger release for that one. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Good. If he does offer the foot coming towards me, I'm gonna release for that as well because I mean the goal eventually is leading but all I'm looking for right now in the release from the rope is the nose. Good. Good boy. Good boy. 
So the same exercise we were doing in the prior videos. I'm going to be shortening myself down this stick, but now I have, it's kind of the combined exercise. I did a moment without the stick touching him, working on the rope and the nose. Good, and now I'm putting the two together. So I break up whatever exercise I want it to work up to in as many small pieces as possible. Good boy, there. Good. So this is a chance where I might get to work on the forward motion because he likes to do that little walk backwards, go forward exercise. So if he goes backwards now, I am going to be putting pressure on that rope. Let's bring the nose towards me. Good. Good boy. Good boy. And you'll notice most of this work, he's a better example than the mare, is a lot of like tedious repetition with him. Right, you keep building up, you change up the exercise some. Good boy. Good. Good boy. So this is an area where there's that tree back there and I really don't want him to go around it that way so I'm gonna change my energy presence. Same thing, even if your round pen has trees in it or corners, you can easily adjust your body on the exercise that you're doing. Put some slack in the line, take away the pressure of the stick, move your body, it's better to look for safety first over working towards that one exercise or goal you've been focusing on. Good. Good boy. So now I'm going to see if I can work with just my hand approaching him and possibly pet a new area of his neck or maybe his face if he offers that. Good boy. Good. I'm going to acknowledge that small try from him. So again, I'm wanting to put further down on the neck, but if he shows a little discomfort and works through it on his own without me, I'm not going to push him through that. I really do want to reward him for relaxing and trying. Good. Good boy. Good. 
good. Good, I'm gonna do one more time on the neck and then see if I can change up and do a little bit towards the head. Good boy. Good boy. So the reason I put the rope on that side of me, just another like general safety thinking thing, if he does move, it most likely is going to be that way. So if the rope is on that side of me, there's not a super big chance of getting caught in it. Good boy. Hi friend. Whenever I'm introducing new spots that I'm touching on them, I'll always go to a familiar spot. So a good point for me and most Mustangs to touch initially is gonna be that branded area. So that's kind of my sign and area to go to, is right where that brand is. It's a good spot on the neck normally, and you can do a lot of work from there. And then I never really forget what my return spot is. So start with the familiar spot, go to the new area, and don't make a big deal when you go to that new area, right? Don't hang out there for a crazy amount of time. Just kind of touch over it and release. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Now I do want to start reaching a little more under his neck because that'll be where I reach to when I get a halter. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good. So when there's resistance there, I'm not going to release or back up. Good. I'm going to try to hold my energy pretty close to him. Try to get one more pet in that area before I release. When he goes to move, I'm not going to put pressure on this rope, right? Because my goal isn't to keep him in one spot or teach him to lead right now. Just working through more of those jitters than anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a decision to push him back into that corner he was just in. Because I don't wanna have to do all the pressure on the rope right now.
Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good. So that'll be my session for him. And again, if you don't get close enough to your horse when you're using that rope and ring, you can just take the carriage stick or lunge whip, whatever tool you've got and kind of play with the ring to get it to loosen up, throw the rope over, loosen it over their head, use or use the stick to get it off over their ears. But it's not too tricky to get it off even if you can't get your hands on them.